Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Former CIA Director John Brennan has proven to be many things. He is dishonest, having lied to the American people multiple times while working as director of the CIA. He's irresponsible. He's accused his political opponents of treason, a death penalty offense, without offering any evidence at all. But above all, Brennan is vocal. For the past year, he has shouted his views on every possible political topic, as is his right. Well, giving his opinion is literally his job now, actually. He's a cable news pundit. Yesterday, the Trump administration finally revoked his security clearance. Now, why was John Brennan able to keep his top secret clearance after leaving government in the first place? Do other MSNBC contributors have security clearances? If so, what national interest is served by that? And how did somebody so obviously limited intellectually get to be CIA director in the first place? Those are all valid questions. No one on the left even bothered to try to explain any of those things. Instead, they started yelling about how Brennan's rights were being violated. He knows the Russian collusion angle, and that's what Trump is trying to silence. Nixonian-type practices of trying to silence anyone who's willing to criticize this president. The, the larger implication here is the jeopardy to our first, our first Amendment rights, and by extension, others. Hear that? The First Amendment. Because you really don't have freedom of speech unless you also have a top-secret government security clearance. Brennan, of course, agreed with that. He wrote a piece claiming that Trump revoked his clearance, quote, to try to silence anyone who would dare challenge him. Where was Brennan's essay about being silenced published? Well, in The New York Times, a newspaper with three million subscribers. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what it looks like to be muzzled. Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut, who not only is a fake war hero, but also a graduate of Yale Law School, argued that Brennan somehow has a constitutional right to a security clearance. Notice how Blumenthal keeps a straight face as he says this. Watch. It is not only an abuse of power, it is illegal. When the founders of our great nation decided on the First Amendment, it was because the King of England would retaliate against his critics. Mm. He has the authority to do a lot of things, but not in a way that violates the law. Hmm. Thanks for the lesson on the law, Senator. So here's the takeaway. John Brennan has a constitutional right to a federal security clearance, though he does not work for the federal government. You do not have that right. Neither do I or anyone you know. Only John Brennan has that right because he resides in a special class of elites that you are obligated to obey. And by the way, if you disagree with any of that, you are a monster. You are on the side of bloodthirsty dictators like Stalin and Pol Pot. Watch as more dumb people talk. What we're seeing today is this is what dictators do. This is a dictatorial exercise of power that should frighten. It's a clear abuse of power, and it's a mark of an authoritarian dictator. This is a, a, a striking move towards authoritarianism. You know, this is what dictators do. They shut down the press. They shut down dissent. They jail their opponents. So he's a dictator. Let that settle in for a minute. If Trump is a dictator, he may be the single most incompetent dictator in world history. For example, he lets all these morons go on cable television and accuse him of crimes, but doesn't do anything about it. They keep talking. Somebody better alert the secret police. But wait, the secret police are busy right now. They're watching MSNBC and nodding along in agreement. It's that kind of dictatorship, a looser, more Mediterranean version where no one actually gets repressed. Of course, if you're looking for a more Germanic style of authoritarianism, we have that too in the United States, but it's not in the White House. It's in Silicon Valley, which is happy to prevent you from expressing your views in public if they disagree with those views. That's everywhere these days. And yet, amazingly, somehow, the champions of speech you just watched, First Amendment absolutists like Senator Blumenthal, who learned the value of the Constitution while pretending to serve in Vietnam, haven't noticed. It's odd, isn't it? 